horizon as Gramps, Rappy, and Zeke trudged up the worn, cracked steps of what had once been a grand synagogue. Now, now it stood as a forgotten relic in the wasteland of the Genesis Plague, a crumbling temple of cracked marble and broken stained glass left to weather the strange new world. Rappy, ever alert, sniffed the air, his talons clacking lightly on the stone steps. Zeke, silent as usual, kept to the shadows. His decaying body, draped in ragged clothing, moved with an unnatural grace, and his hollow eyes scanned the surroundings, watching for any sign of danger. Gramps, rifle slung over his shoulder, was quiet but tense. They'd been through countless ruins by now, but this place felt different. Feels off, Zeke muttered, his voice a raspy echo of the man he used to be. Gramps nodded. Yeah, but we need supplies. It's the only place around for miles. If we're lucky, we'll find something usable. They pushed open the massive wooden doors, which creaked ominously as they swung inward. Inside, the synagogue was bathed in twilight, with long shadows stretching across the floor. Dust particles floated in the air, illuminated by the fading sunlight filtering through the remnants of the stained glass windows. The pews were scattered and overturned, and vines had crept in through the cracks, reclaiming the once sacred space. As they ventured deeper inside, the air seemed to grow heavier, as if the weight of centuries of prayers still lingered in the walls. At the far end of the hall, the ark that once housed the Torah scrolls stood empty and cracked, its doors hanging loosely on their hinges. Rappy let out a low growl, his eyes fixated on the center of the room. Gramps followed his gaze, and that's when he saw him. A figure stood in the middle of the synagogue, bathed in the dying light of the setting sun. He wore long, flowing robes, tattered and stained from the trials of the outside world. His face was lined with age, but his eyes gleamed with a sharp, almost otherworldly intelligence. A tall staff was in his hand, the wood twisted and engraved with symbols that Gramps didn't recognize. Shalom, the figure said, his voice calm, yet carrying an undeniable authority. Gramps stopped in his tracks. Didn't expect to find anyone here. The old man smiled, though it was tinged with sadness. Few expect to find a rabbi in times like these, but I assure you, I am here. My name is Rabbi Mordechai. Rappy tilted his head as if sizing the man up, but remained silent. Zeke, on the other hand, shifted uncomfortably, as if the presence of the rabbi stirred something deep within his hollow chest. Gramps stepped forward cautiously. You've been living here? Rabbi Mordechai nodded. I have for some time now, after the world changed. Well, I found there were few places left for people like me. This is where I belong. The synagogue still stands, even when so much else has fallen. Gramps glanced around the ruined space. Doesn't seem like much protection. Rabbi Mordechai's smile widened. Appearances can be deceiving, my friend. The walls of this place have seen much, and now they offer sanctuary to those who need it. Gramps raised an eyebrow, skeptical but intrigued. Sanctuary from what? I don't see much left out there worth saving. The rabbi's eyes darkened, and he stepped closer, the sound of his staff tapping lightly on the stone floor. The Genesis Plague didn't just change the physical world. It changed the balance of life, of death, of the very forces that hold this universe together. Zeke's decayed face twitched, his voice unsteady. I know that feeling. Rabbi Mordechai turned his gaze to Zeke, studying him with a mixture of compassion and understanding. Yes, I see that you've been touched by it as well. But you are still here, still, you. That says much about your strength. Zeke shifted uncomfortably, the rabbi's words unsettling him. It's not strength, he muttered. It's just survival. Gramps cut in. We're just passing through, rabbi, looking for food, supplies, anything we can use to keep moving. The rabbi nodded slowly. I can offer you what I have, but I must warn you, this is no ordinary place. The forces that have shaped this world are at work here too. The synagogue has become something more. Uh, a bridge, if you will, between what was and what will be. Gramps exchanged a glance with Rappy, then with Zeke. What do you mean, a bridge? The rabbi's gaze grew distant. In times of great upheaval, the walls between worlds grow thin. The spiritual and the physical, the living and the dead, the past and the future, they all begin to blur. Here, in this sacred space, those lines are especially fragile. Rappy let out a low hiss, his eyes flicking nervously toward the shadows at the edge of the room. Gramps tightened his grip on his rifle, though he didn't raise it. Sounds like trouble. Rabbi Mordecai chuckled softly. 
trouble perhaps, but also opportunity. The Genesis plague has brought chaos, yes, but it has also opened the door for something new, something ancient. Gramps stepped closer to the rabbi, his voice low. You're talking in riddles, old man. What's really going on here? The rabbi sighed, leaning on his staff as he spoke. The Genesis plague has awoken more than just prehistoric creatures and mythic beasts. It has stirred the spirits of the ancient ones, those who walked the earth long before us, and they are not at rest. Zeke's decayed eyes flicked to the rabbi. The dead, Rabbi Mordechai nodded. The dead, yes, but also something else. Beings from beyond our understanding, angels, demons, jinn, they walk among us now, hidden in the shadows, waiting for their moment. Gramps felt a chill run down his spine. He had seen plenty of strange things since the plague began, but this, this was something else entirely. So what are we supposed to do about it? The rabbi smiled sadly. We survive, my friend. We keep moving forward, even when the path is uncertain. And we remember that, even in the darkest times, there is light. Gramps looked at the old man, seeing in him a kind of quiet strength that he hadn't seen in anyone for a long time. He wasn't sure he believed everything the rabbi was saying, but one thing was clear. The world had changed in ways they were only beginning to understand. Thanks for the warning, Gramps said, turning to leave. But we're just looking to get by. Rabbi Mordechai nodded. Of course. But remember, this is a world of miracles now, both good and bad. Stay alert and may the blessings of the Holy One go with you. As they left the synagogue, the sun finally dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the landscape. Gramps glanced back at the ancient building, its silhouette sharp against the darkening sky. Something about the place lingered in his mind, a feeling he couldn't shake. Rappy let out a soft trill, nudging Gramps as if to ask, What's next? Gramps sighed. We keep moving, boy, just like always. But as they walked away from the synagogue and back into the desolate streets, Gramps couldn't help but wonder if the rabbi was right, if the Genesis plague had opened the door to something far more dangerous than they could ever imagine, and if they would be ready when it finally came through.